Now let's meet our first recipient of the evening. Please help me welcome Marilyn. <clears throat> Marilyn was first diagnosed 26 years ago with cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, which progressed to the point where a transplant was required. Fortunately, Gift of Life found a match in their registry, and Marilyn underwent treatment close to home at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. During that time, she relied on her husband, Bob, who took care of everything from doling out medications to bleaching the kitchen and bathroom to prevent infection. Her daughters, Katie and Alex, and her best friends, Karen and Cheryl, also lent a hand, bringing gifts, conversation, and love. Marilyn feels that the transplant has given her the most valuable gift she could ask for, the gift of more time. She had always dreamed of becoming a grandmother, but feared that she would not live long enough to see it happen. Thanks to the gift of life, her donor, and her daughter, Alex, she is now the proud grandmama to 15-month-old Brooke, and she is eternally grateful. Now let's hear about Marilyn's donor. Marilyn's donor joined the Gift of Life Registry in 2009 at a drive run by the Student Medical Ethics Society at Yeshiva University, where he is pursuing a biology degree. A simple cheek swab was all it took, and a year later, he got the call that he was a match. I'm gonna cry already, and we're not even halfway through this, Marilyn, sorry. <laughs> he admits he was a little nervous about the procedure, and more than a little concerned about a major physics test he had two days after the procedure. But once he thought it through, he found it very straightforward. He thought, someone needs a life-saving donation and I am potentially the only person in the world born with the ability to give it to her. How could I say no? While waiting to give the donation, he felt a new sense of purpose, like he was literally carrying someone's life in his bones. He says he crossed the streets more carefully, protecting his own life and that of the unknown person in need. He joked with his friends that he was pregnant with a 62-year-old woman. <laughs> but it was true in a sense. He was living for two, taking care of himself because someone else was literally depending on him. Thankfully, he kept himself safe until the donation could be made at the University of Maryland. He is now 23 years old, and he is an aspiring biology researcher. He is also the editor of Kol HaMavaser, the Jewish thought magazine of, Jew of Yeshiva University. He's become actively involved in donor recruitment drives on campus, using his experience to inspire countless others to join the Gift of Life Registry. <laughs> Marilyn, I know you have been patiently waiting, and the moment is here. I would like to introduce you to the donor who saved your life, accompanied by his mother. Please meet Ariel. I do have a prepared speech here. I just want to note, um, my, I'm still my best line um, about the 62-year-old pregnancy. So I will have to adjust as, as we go. Forgive me if I stutter just a bit. Um, here we go. Um, this is a tremendously exciting evening for me, and the timing really could not be better. I stand before you tonight at the conclusion of my college years. I never expected this to be the case, but Gift of Life has turned out to be a running theme throughout my college experience, a defining element of the last four years. In my first year on campus, I got swabbed by a representative, a representative of the YU Undergrad Medical Ethics Society. The next year, 
I was, I, I was identified as a match. In my third year, I proceeded with the stem cell donation. Finally tonight, it's now a week before my graduation, and I just got to meet you. This is an emotional and a really wonderful occasion for me. And it's really a moment where things are coming uh, full circle and it's really exciting. Um, I have the privilege of sharing this event with friends and family who have joined me for this special moment. To my parents, my mother who's right here, who's joining me now, uh, my siblings Rachel and Yair, my uncle John and Aunt Lori, um, all of whom really provided immense emotional support. And uh, my, my friend, uh, Alana from the Baltimore community, who was also incredibly helpful in uh, planning my, my multiple trips to the University of Maryland Hospital, where I uh, went through with the donation. So I offer my thanks for your encouragement then and my appreciation for being here with me tonight. Gift of Life, printed materials, and the website often quote the Talmudic saying, he who saves one life, it is as if he has saved the entire world. A, a more standard interpretation of this is that each person has an array of experiences, personal connections, contributions, and achievements, which is absolutely irreplaceable. And that's true. But speaking from personal experience, there's an additional component. Someone who saves a life has created a whole new world for himself or for herself. Saving a life is a defining experience for the active party. And I know that this opportunity to give life-saving stem cells has changed who I am, has, tra has transformed my being. While I was in the process of, pre of preparing for my donation, as was mentioned earlier, I wrote to a friend, I'm pregnant with a 62-year-old woman. I'm a single father. <laughs> no tax benefits, but <laughs> it's close enough. Um, but just as a woman who gives birth is instantly trans transformed into a mother, so too my donation effected a deep change within me and gave my own life a degree of meaning that it has never, ever had before. Marilyn, you gave me a reason the night before my donation to cite the classic line from A Tale of Two Cities. It is a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done. And I thank you so much for that opportunity. I thought I was going to be somber and sober about this, but I just wanted to tell you I'm, I'm now 23 years old. So. <laughs> oh, okay. I have an angel, and my angel is right here. He is my donor. If, we're, if, if it were not for this incredible human being, I would not be here today. I never realized what it meant to save another person's life, but I do now. I am the one who was saved. Because of someone I have never known or met, I now have the opportunity to enjoy my little 15-month-old 15 15 -month granddaughter, my own two daughters, my husband, and all of my great friends. Ever since the doctors at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance told me I needed a stem cell transplant, I knew that this was the end of the line. No more life-saving drugs, radiation, or chemotherapy. Nothing was stopping the progression of my disease. The only possibility of beating it was transplantation. The big question was, did I have any close relatives that might be potential donors? And the answer was no. So how could I possibly find someone who would be my donor? I was really ignorant as to how this whole process worked and what the possibilities were out in the world. How does one with no immediate living family procure a matching donor? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have learned a lot since then. It is through organizations such as the Gift of Life Bone Marrow Foundation that everyday people like me have the privilege of a longer life and, and, of, and to live free of disease. It is critical that all of us go back to our own circles, our own universes, and spread the word out to our young people who are strong and healthy to get on the donor registry. 
It's a simple process and you never know when you will be called to give a total stranger back their own life. Through God and hundreds of people, many of whom I will never know, my angel was found and I have been given the supreme privilege of meeting this young man tonight, my living angel. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn, and thank you, Ariel. We're very grateful to have these incredibly powerful and intimate moments shared with us, obviously, tonight.